am doing something a little bit different with this video. I actually have a co-host. Her name is Zoe, and she's right here in my lap. Aww. Zoe's a puppy that we just got literally last week, and she's finally tired. I've been trying to wear her down for like an hour now. But we got her last week, and on about Wednesday or Thursday, I had to put her away to go to work, and when I did, I literally cried. So the thing is, like, I was wearing her out, she was getting all crazy, and then she finally got tired, and she fell asleep in my lap, and which is what she's finally doing now. And I just was like really wanting to just drink in this moment, you know? How often do you get to like cuddle with a puppy, you know? It just never happens. And so I was just kind of laying there and just kind of feeling grateful for this thing that I didn't normally get to have. And then I had to put her in the bathroom when I went to work because she still is not housebroken and she pees everywhere. So I put her in the bathroom and she started howling and yelping and I just was like, oh. And I just cried like a bitch. Actually, that's offensive to bitches. I'm sorry, Zoe. But how did I go in literally three or four days from being somebody who had no idea this dog existed to somebody who cried because I was gonna have to be away from her all day? There's a hormone that our body produces, it's called oxytocin. And it's also known as the cuddle hormone because it's something that your body releases when you cuddle with another person or when you have some kind of physical contact with them. That's why being physical with a partner is really important in a relationship. Zoe being brand new to the house and only being three months old, whenever we would try to put her you know, in another room, she would cry and then we weren't able to sleep. So we let her sleep in the bed with us, which is something I've never done before. But something about cuddling up with this little baby over time, it's really an amazing hormone when you think about it. It, it bonds people together and makes them more socially connected to each other. But is it everything that we think it is? Oxytocin was first discovered in the 1900s when they realized that it was something that helped women to induce pregnancy. In fact, it got its name for the, from the Greek term for rapid birth. But people studying the chemical were, as they researched it, they found out that it actually also helped produce a maternal instinct in rats. They noticed that virgin rats would suddenly show maternal instincts toward pups, like taking care of stray pups, leading them back into the nest, and so forth. They found that the chemical helped with pair bonding in prairie voles, and it was even found in roundworms. It's a very ancient molecule. Could this chemical have formed and evolved over the years to help humans form bonds with each other? Is our entire society formed? on this chemical that our brain produces? Human babies require more care when they're first born than any other mammal. Is it possible that this hormone has helped over the millennia, over our evolution, in mothers and fathers caring for their babies? This is an interesting concept because we are very social animals. We are literally wired at the brain level as social animals. For example, there are mirror neurons that we have in our brains that make us kind of copy what other people are doing, or it also will make us feel more connected to somebody if they're copying what we're doing. For example, uh, little newborn babies. You can stick your tongue out at a newborn baby, and they'll stick their tongue out back at you. Now, when you think about all the things that go into that, realizing that what you're looking at is sticking out their tongue, realizing that your tongue is the same as their tongue, and then doing the actual motion of mimicking that person, it's actually really remarkable that a brand new newborn baby can do that. Good girl. Now it's this quality of oxytocin that made many people think that it might be a good treatment for autism because autism is a condition that makes it harder for people to recognize emotions in other people's faces. The results, however, have been pretty mixed. For example, one study took some autistic kids and they gave them a dose, a breathable dose of oxytocin, and they found that they were able to better recognize emotions in other people's faces from one dose. However, that same researcher and those same kids were given two doses a day for, for two months, and it didn't really show any discernible effects for that. In fact, oxytocin has a downside as well. It was found that some people who took a dose of oxytocin actually began to be more aggressive towards outsiders. So it made them form stronger bonds within their own social group that made them more wary of people outside their social group. And I would argue we need a little bit less of that these days. The human brain is famously the most complex object in the entire universe as far as we know. So it's impossible that it would be just one answer for this problem of autism and this problem of not finding connections with people. So it's probably one of many different mechanisms involved in forming pair bonds between people. And in fact, one of the studies that they did showed that mice given oxytocin alone didn't necessarily show that maternal behavior, but when given oxytocin combined with the sound of a crying pup, 
they did behave that way, which is pretty much exactly what turned me into a giant weepy mess. Most of what I'm talking about I got from an article from Scientific American. I'll link it down below. Thanks you guys for watching. More videos come. Love you guys. Take care. I can't overstress how literally 30 minutes ago she was running around like crazy and I could not get her to sit still for five seconds. I've been trying to shoot this video for like an hour and a half now. And now she's just completely conked out. Look at her. Bye bye. She's a bye. She's a bye. I'm, I'm gone. I'm done.